John 15:13 speaks, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Today's saint finds his history in the years of World War II, which took more than 70 million lives in total. This was a tough time for every country. The fight for freedom, justice, love, money, and power left no prisoners. In the midst of so much pain, there were models of faith. One such model was born January 8, 1894. Raymond Colby grew up to be a Franciscan friar and joyful lover of our Blessed Mother from a vision he had as a child. In 1910, he took the name of Maximilian and built a friary near Warsaw, beginning his Immaculata movement. This movement was furthered in Japan and India, bringing the love of Mary and Jesus wherever it went. Colby went on to publish a pamphlet that was read by more than 800 friars around the world. In 1936, Colby returned home due to sickness. He became a prisoner of the Germans' largest concentration network, Auschwitz. At this camp, there was a very strict law in place for any people that escaped. If anyone ever found freedom, then ten prisoners at random were chosen to be put to death as an example in order to discourage the other prisoners to escape. During Colby's time in Auschwitz, he spent his time moving about the cells giving aid and reconciliation to anyone who wanted it. Colby was a true example of a servant leader in the name of Jesus Christ. In July of 1941, somebody escaped the Auschwitz camp. So as rules dictated, ten prisoners were chosen at random to be put to death in the starvation room. But in August of 1941, Franciszek Gajalzanek, prisoner of Auschwitz, was spared his life by a stranger. My poor wife, my poor children, what will they do? cried Gajalzanek. At this time, Colby stepped forward to the commander giving orders and requested to replace Gajalzanek in the starvation bunkers. Since the concentration camps required the labor of young men, the commander agreed to Colby's request and threw him in and nine others into the starvation bunkers for two weeks. While in the starvation bunkers, Colby continued to encourage his fellow prisoners to keep faith in God and look forward to heaven. As the days came to an end, Colby was injected with a lethal shot because his strong faith in Jesus had kept him alive. On August 14, 1941, Maximilian Kolbe died as a martyr of charity. Forty-one years later, Pope John Paul II declared Kolbe a saint with Gajalzanek in attendance. As patron saint of drug addicts, political prisoners, and the pro-life movement, Saint Maximilian Kolbe continues today to be an outstanding example to all young men in living a self-sacrificial life that Jesus all calls us to.